it's Emmy Hall at TFL Car, and behind me I've got the 2015 Honda CRV. Now, this car's been refreshed for this year, and it is one of the most fuel efficient uh, crossovers in its class, but it's got that dreaded CVT. So, what am I gonna say about it? We'll find out next coming up on the Fast Lane Car. This year the CRV's gotten a pretty strong refresh with new front and rear faces. Now in the front you've got a much sleeker design, the proportion on the grille has changed and you've got some chrome trim added to the fog lights. In the rear you've got, again, more chrome trim and a straighter crease in the body instead of last year's model which curved up just a little bit to meet the taillights. Now these taillights also have a slightly different presentation in terms of the backup lights. Now under the hood, Honda has given us pretty much the same engine that you get in the Accord, which is a 2.4 liter, there it is, 2.4 liter four cylinder, which is good for 185 horsepower and 181 pound feet of torque. Now you can get this car in front wheel drive, but we have got the all wheel drive version and powers go into all four wheels via a continuously variable transmission. And we'll talk about that a lot later. Now EPA fuel ratings are 26 in the city, 33 out on the highway and 28 combined. But to be honest with you, my combined rating was 22.5. So as always, take those numbers with a grain of salt. And it's an Earth Dreams technology. Ooh, fancy. Now Honda does say that you can take this car off-road, but let's be honest, there's only 6.8 inches of ground clearance. So I, yeah. You could take it on a grade, like a graded road to your cabin, but really just, just, just don't, don't take it off road. You can tow 1500 pounds, which is really nice. Now the suspension has been revamped a little bit for this year. So I've got front and rear sway bars. Um, it's not necessarily the sportiest chassis out there, but I think that everyday drivers are going to be satisfied. <music> the top of the line touring model which means I've got all of the bells and whistles. I've got leather seats, we've got a multifunctional steering wheel, heated front seats, 10-way programmable um, driver seat with two position memory, Bluetooth, Sirius XM, I mean all of those things that you really come to know, love, and enjoy. Now one of the things that I find a little bit disappointing in this cabin is that there are a lot of plastic materials. I mean like that's yeah, that's not quite so good. I wish that we could have just a little bit more refinement in here because after all, this is the top of the line. I expect a little bit more. Now, having said that, everything is thoughtfully placed. Um, I do miss that I don't get any redundant controls for the, um, for the radio. Unfortunately, all the controls are either on your multifunctional steering wheel or within the seven inch touchscreen itself. I mean, that's just because I'm a little bit of a nerd. Um, and I do have a lot of uh, storage here. So I've got my little center storage here, two cup holders, a little cubby hole here, a little cubby hole here, a nice place for my phone, a little cubby hole down here, some places in the doors. I mean, there's like places to stash your stuff all over. And of course, my favorite thing in the entire world inside a cabin is the sunroof, holla! So this Honda is equipped with the CVT, which stands for a continuously variable transmission. So what that means is that instead of having fixed gears, like first, second, third, fourth, you basically have infinite amount of gears. It's not shiftable, although some, some of them you can get with paddle shifters, but this is not a shiftable automatic. So the, the computer is going to select what it thinks is the most efficient uh, RPM for the speed that you're currently going up and the engine speed that you're currently at, right? So what that means is when you're just toddling around town, it seems that the goal of this car is to get you down to like 13, 1400 RPMs as soon as possible, all in the name of fuel efficiency. Now I'm rolling on some Dunlop all season tires, but I want to talk about these 18 inch alloy wheels because they are seriously stylish for a car like this. I mean, I feel like a CRV is something that you're maybe not an enthusiast is gonna wanna buy, but look at these wheels. 
They're crazy. They have so much style in them. I just love it. I love that they put these on this car. Now, if you were in a car um, that was maybe a shiftable automatic or a manual, that's so low that when you actually want to accelerate, you would want to downshift. Now, I'm not saying that the engine bogs when you're when you're on that, but it okay, it bogs just a little bit. Now, this car does have a uh, econ mode, regular mode, and then a sport mode. I spent most of my time in the drive and the sport mode, and even when you're up at higher speeds, like when I was at 55 miles an hour, I think my RPMs were right around 1500, and at 65 miles an hour, they were only up to 2800. room for three full-sized adults back here. I mean, this seat is set all the way back as far as I can go, and I have like at least six inches of room here. I got plenty of headroom, and look at how much this door swings open. I mean, it's almost to a 90 degree angle. So getting in and out or loading um, cargo in and out of the back seat is gonna be super crazy easy. I mean, look at that. Oh my gosh. I haven't gotten out of a car so easily since, uh, since uh, that one time the thing and the stuff and the junk. Remember that one time when we did that? Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> I do like this um, infotainment setup better in this Honda than I have in the other Hondas that I've driven. In this case, I have my seven inch touchscreen below and my smaller informational screen up top. The other Hondas like in the Accord, they're actually switched. Now, it's fine. I mean, some of the menus seem to be a little convoluted and to be honest with you, I'm not really sure why we actually need two screens. I mean, Chrysler's able to do it all in one screen with the Uconnect system and still have it make sense and be relatively easy to use. In fact, most manufacturers only have one entertainment screen, so or infotainment screen. So I'm not sure quite why we have to do it this way, but whatever, I mean, it still works, right? Um, the graphics could use a little bit of an update. I mean, my nav screen is up here. You know, it just doesn't, it definitely looks a little dated. So this car also has the Honda Lane Watch system, which is when I signal right, there's a little camera in my side mirror, and then I get the image here on my seven inch touchscreen. And frankly, in the Honda cars, I found it to be a little bit of overkill, but in this car, because it's bigger, you're occupying more space and you're riding higher, I did find that I like to have it, especially there were um, specifically one or two times where um, I looked in here and I was like, oh crap, there's that car in my blind spot, which I totally can't see in my mirror. Of course, if you just look like this, you can still see, but it does help you with small cars that are smaller and lower to the road. So it would be nice if Honda offered us an optional engine upgrade. I mean, I'm not saying that we wanna go to the V6 that's offered in the Accord, cause 270 something horsepower for this might be a little much for your average consumer. But it would be nice to maybe get a four cylinder turbocharged car, which is going to give you a little bit more, it's gonna make this car a little bit more competitive with others crossovers like maybe the more athletic uh, Mazda CX-5. And of course, if you're really looking for off-road capability, you should look at the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, which 